The announcement this week by Nicola Sturgeon, the Scottish First Minister, calling for a second Scottish independence referendum, appeared to wrong foot the UK government as they prepare to trigger Article 50, the mechanism that will formally signal the UK's exit from the EU. But with opinion polls in Scotland showing support for independence remaining broadly static since the country held a breakaway referendum from the UK in 2014, what realistic prospect is there that a majority yes vote might be secured just three years after 55% of people in Scotland voted to remain part of Britain. Before 2014's independence referendum, the ruling pro-independence Scottish National Party repeatedly told voters the independence referendum would be, quotes, a once-in-a-generation event. It became a mantra repeated by both the former SNP leader and Scottish First Minister Alex Salmond and also by his then deputy, Nicola Sturgeon. Well, I, mean, I think the SNP have always uh, said that, in our view, these kind of referendums are once-in-a-generation events. This is a, probably a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for Scotland, and I hope we seize that opportunity to bring powers home so that we can create the kind of country we want to be uh, and continue to have a fantastic relationship with our friends, neighbours, family uh, in other parts of the, the British Isles. Nicola Sturgeon there, speaking before 2014 Scottish independence referendum. But last year's Brexit vote that will see the UK leave the European Union appears to have altered the SNP's understanding of what a generation or once-in-a-lifetime opportunity means. At a press conference on Monday, Sturgeon unveiled her plans for a second referendum. I will now take the steps necessary to make sure that Scotland will have a choice at the end of this process. A choice of whether to follow the UK to a hard Brexit or to become an independent country, able to secure a real partnership of equals with the rest of the UK and our own relationship with Europe. 62% of Scottish voters voted to remain within the EU following the 2016 EU referendum on UK membership of the European trading bloc. And it was in this context that Sturgeon went on to set out what she believes constitutes the SNP's fresh mandate to call for a second referendum on Scottish independence, that she hopes will retain Scotland's place within the EU. Next week she will seek a Section 30 order, a legislative mechanism that will allow the Scottish Parliament to formally request the UK government Government grant a second independence referendum. The Scottish Government's mandate for offering this choice is beyond doubt. Last year we were elected with the highest share of the constituency vote won by any party in the history of devolution on a manifesto that said this, the Scottish Parliament should have the right to hold another referendum if there is a significant and material change in the circumstances that prevailed in 2014 such as Scotland being taken out of the EU against our will. These conditions have, of course, now been met. So I can confirm today that next week I will seek the authority of the Scottish Parliament to agree with the UK Government the details of a Section 30 order, the procedure that will enable the Scottish Parliament to legislate for an independence referendum. But with UK government ministers already ruling out the prospect of granting a second Scottish referendum before Brexit is complete, what realistic chance does Scotland have of becoming independent in either the near future or even in the next generation? Earlier I spoke with Dennis Canavan. Mr Canavan is the former chairman of the official Scottish independence campaign known as Yes Scotland and a former Labour MP and independent MSP at the Scottish Parliament. Now Dennis Canavan, levels of support for Scottish independence are higher now than they were before the 2014 campaign began. But it's still going to be a significant task to secure a yes vote. Has the yes campaign fully understood the reasons why it didn't win the last time and is it likely to take a significantly different tack next time round? Well, it's worth recalling that the, the, the start of the, the last campaign in 2012, support for independence was hovering at about 28 or 29%. And by the time the referendum day came round, we had increased it to 45%. Uh, not enough to ensure victory, uh, but uh, nevertheless, a very, very significant increase in the number of people voting for independence. On things like currency, we were in a weak position, especially when the UK government and the official opposition at Westminster ruled out any possibility of a, a currency union uh, with sterling. So obviously we've got to work hard on currency to 
get a consistent message and a credible message across. Another reason was I think there was too much emphasis on the oil revenues. And again, some work is being done on that through the Growth Commission and other think tanks. And another we- apparent weakness, ironically, <laughs> was our membership uh, of the European Union. It's uh, rather ironic that many people in 2014 believed the claim that only a no vote would guarantee membership of the, the European Union. And will support for continued EU membership among previous no voters prove enough to persuade a majority to vote yes next time? Many people who voted no to independence in 2014 then voted to remain in the European Union uh, last year. Uh, many of these people will switch to, to vote yes to independence because they feel that Scotland is, as I said, on the verge of being kicked out of the European Union against their will. But those converts, I, I admit uh, these converts will be very welcome, but they, not be, they may not be sufficient to have uh, to ensure a yes result next time round. So uh, we must work harder than ever to convince people of the democratic advantages and consequently the social and economic advantages of Scotland becoming uh, independent because an independent Scotland would mean a fairer, more equal society with full membership of the international community. And what prospect is there that the pro-union side will adopt a more positive tone during the next Scottish independence referendum campaign? Very little prospect. I mean, I, I think we're going to see Project Fear resurrected yet again. The entire British establishment will use every dirty trick in the book to unite, to try to terrify people into voting no to independence. But I am confident that if we work hard at it, then hope will triumph over fear. And during the EU referendum in 2016, EU nationals living in the UK were barred from voting. If that same voting criteria had been applied for the last Scottish independence referendum of only allowing people born in Scotland to vote in the referendum, then the 2014 there would have been a majority yes vote by a margin coincidentally of 52%, which is the same margin that Leave campaigners secured in 2016. Given that precedent set by the UK government in 2016, should the next Scottish independence referendum be decided only by those born in Scotland, and would that necessarily guarantee a yes vote? My answer to your first question is no. I think it would be wrong to exclude people from voting simply because they were not born in Scotland. I think that if people have come to Scotland to live and work and make their homes here, uh, that should entitle them to vote. And I am confident that most of those people will vote yes on the grounds that an independent Scotland would welcome immigrants because we need to increase our working population. The majority of immigrants who come to Scotland make a very, very valuable contribution to Scottish society. And the UK government looks set to rule out any possibility of second of a second Scottish independence vote before Brexit has been completed. Might that strategy backfire on the Conservatives? Yes, it would, it would backfire. I think that if Theresa May continues with her intransigence, then that will encourage more Scots to vote yes to independence in the forthcoming referendum. In the Scottish White Paper, when it was published in the previous Scottish First Minister, Alex Salmond, stated repeatedly before the 2014 referendum that it would be a once-in-a-generation opportunity. With hindsight, was that not a hostage to fortune statement? And do you think Alex Salmond regrets putting that the 2014 referendum in that context? It may have been a mistake to use that uh, phrase, but uh, perhaps it's a forgivable mistake. I mean, very few people saw Brexit actually happening, and very few people predicted a scenario whereby the UK would vote by a narrow margin to leave the European Union, whereas 62% of Scots voted to remain in the European Union. So that is why uh, I think that uh, there is a very justifiable case for going for a second referendum much earlier than the generation gap which was referred to in the last campaign. And the other obstacle potentially is Europe with uh, some countries there or representatives in Europe saying that Scotland would have to go to the back of the queue etc. Should the independence movement have done more to garner greater international support for Scottish independence to help counter those kinds of potential obstacles to EU membership? Well, we're working on that. I, I remember uh, during the 2014 campaign, Jose Manuel Barroso was, said that uh, an independent Scotland was most unlikely to, to get a membership of the European Union. Uh, in fact, I think he, he used even stronger ones to rule it out uh, absolutely. But we've got to remember that Jose Barroso was not speaking on behalf of all member states. As, he, he, he was president of the European Commission. 
commission at that time. And uh, Barroso may have been motivated by the fact that he did not want to alienate his Spanish friends who are worried about the possibility of uh, independence for Catalonia and possibly uh, other uh, regions of Spain. Now, some politicians in other European Union member states take a different line from Barroso. And even Spain, even Spain may take a different line if Scottish independence is seen to be a reality rather than just a threat. I mean, you've got to bear in mind the importance of Scotland's fishing resources, their energy resources, and many other resources. And I, 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 I think the probability is that those people who resist uh, an independent Scotland uh, joining the European Union, I think they could be won over. And finally, the UK government is not completely ruling out another Scottish independence referendum, but they are suggesting it would have to be after Brexit is completed. But what are the consequences for Scotland politically, economically and to the general Scottish psyche if another no vote is returned next time around? I'm confident that won't happen, but uh, even if there was another no vote, uh, many people, including myself, would continue campaigning for, for independence. That's what we believe in. But I have to admit that it would be an uphill struggle if there was a no vote this time round. So that's all the more reason why we must work harder than ever uh, to ensure victory this time round. And I am confident, very confident, that we can persuade a majority of the people of Scotland uh, that an independent Scotland will mean a better Scotland, a fairer Scotland, and help to build a better world. Dennis Canavan, many thanks for joining us on World in Focus. Thank you, Mark.